everybody. We're doing part two of spaghetti squash with a balsamic tomato sauce that we made earlier today. So if you've seen some of the other videos, and if you haven't, go look at Healthy Slow Cooking Facebook page, and you can find a bunch of these. So I just started doing them last week, and I did a few two-parters. So in the morning or early afternoon, depending on what's going on, I'm putting together all my ingredients into the slow cooker, letting it cook from four to eight hours, depending. Like today was probably about five, I think. And if you're here, let me know if you watched this morning already. I will go through some of the things that we did. So we peeled, we took a spaghetti squash, we peeled it, cut it into rounds and took the seeds out. And actually you'll be able to see that really clearly. I'm gonna unveil the slow cooker. Okay, it's not gonna look like a whole lot right now. And remember, like right now, I'm letting some of this water drain through so it doesn't come back on and burn me. So we made a sauce that you can kind of see under here. There's some spaghetti squash under there too. And so we're gonna, oh, hi, Ashley. Do we have any job news, Ashley? I'm dying to know. Okay, and Joanne is here to see how it comes out. Um, Ashley did not see it this morning and Brandy missed it this morning. So let me talk you through it a little bit. I'll squish some of this while we're, while we're talking. Um, okay. I gotta stop squishing, I'm not paying good attention. So we took a whole spaghetti squash, we cut off one end and we peeled it, and then we cut off the other end. We cut off that end so that we could even put it up like this and peel it. I definitely watch it if you're not feeling super savvy about dealing with winter squash. Here's the tip, if your spaghetti squash is not fresh, it's gonna be hard to peel. Then you might have to heat it in the microwave or the oven for a little bit, but then you can get over it. Also, a recipe similar to this is in the Revised Vegan Slow Cooker. And you can get a copy of your very own from virtualvegfest.com. And just look up in the shop, me, and you'll find the book and I will sign it to you. Then I used up some of the tomatoes from yesterday. You remember that tomato, uh, the strained tomatoes I got from Lidl. I was told the right way to say it. Um, and I put some, cr not crushed, some diced tomatoes with garlic and basil and some different spices in there and some balsamic. So we did all that in the bottom. I put in, mixed in some frozen green peppers that I had chopped up. And then these are the sweet, uh, the spaghetti squash rounds that you can see. Okay, and Ashley has no news on her job update yet. So what happens, and you can kind of see, you don't want to push too hard, but you want to push hard enough. Now, since this one is, was one piece and not around, but you see how the spaghetti is starting to come out? You can see it of the spaghetti squash. So we're just pressing it. The reason that we wanted to peel it is what we're seeing right now, that I don't have to pull out any gross covered in sauce peels. There may be a few places on the spaghetti I have to smush a little bit harder. This was a good large-ish, or at least medium large-ish sized um, spaghetti squash. And today has been so busy, honestly, we, Cheryl and I, with our jobs, we both haven't really eaten much. So I'm really glad that we have this here. And I'm just pushing with a spatula. And if you didn't peel off all of the outside quite enough. Um, sometimes there's a little part that doesn't turn into it. You, we might see some of that. And we'll just push a little bit harder. Or like this piece, that was from the end. I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit. And mix it around till we can get all of this into its spaghetti form. Okay, and Ashley said she's only have it halved and baked, and that's what a lot of people do. And so we actually cooked our sauce, and the purpose in taking the time to peel it is so this is all we have to do. So, and it really didn't take very long to peel it, honestly, you guys. And if you go back and watch, you'll see. I think 
a half an hour with me talking and peeling and making the sauce and making adjustments. So that's not very long at all. And it's probably going to take five minutes for me to press this just because I'm being, I know how Cheryl, any pieces she's going to um, pick out. So that's why I'm being a little extra thorough. But look, doesn't that look good? It smells really good. And so it really was quite an easy dish to make. Let me see if I can get this to come up a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better in that department. We'll get a little saturation going up. So you can kind of see that better. I don't know why it's a looking so dark right now and so like that's a this is a piece i didn't cut the very ends off so there may be a couple of little pieces like that and just kind of like jackfruit you can chop those up a little bit too or see that's a piece that didn't get quite pushed apart okay and the next thing to do is going to be re-seasoning it so that's the whole point of these two part or slow cooker dishes. But let me get back to the questions, then we'll get to re-seasoning this. Oh, it, looks, it smells really good. Um, okay, questions. She said, it looks amazing. Joanne said, that's a great hack. I know, because like it was just rounds, like little spaghetti wheels, <laughs> spaghetti um, squash wheels, right? And you just smash it, and there you go. And it's, I don't know, I just really like it a lot. Um, and Brandy says to Ashley that she, that's what she's done is slice it in half and bake it. And Ashley's open to new things and this would be good with some TVP. Yeah, you could put all kinds of things in here. I only put bell peppers with the tomatoes, but you could put a mushrooms, you could put TVP, you could put jardine crumbles, you could do all kinds of things with this. Or soy curls, that's great, Joanne. And Brandy said she wants to eat some of it on toast. And you could. You could eat it any way you want. Um, so, okay. We know, we know the drill. I need to get to my tasting spoons. And let's see what we got here. Let's see what I want to adjust, because that's the thing I want you to know about. Wow. So I tasted the sauce this morning, obviously before it melded. And it was pretty good then, but it definitely melded really good. Um, I'm going to add just a little more balsamic, probably only a teaspoon or two. Just like to kick that up a little bit. I'm going to put maybe a half teaspoon of dried basil in there. And I'm going to put more of like a sixteenth of powdered rosemary, maybe, maybe an eighth. I kind of want, rosemary reminds me very much of a fall dish. Now, if you wanted to not put salt in it, you could use granulated garlic or garlic powder, onion powder, and some ground celery seed. I'm going to, I put in a little bit of salt, but I'm just going to put just like half a teaspoon of salt in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some nutritional yeast in. And that's going to be spot on. So I'm going to put two tablespoons of nutritional yeast in. I want you guys to kind of see that. Let's see if I can get it to come in a little bit better. There we go. Just mix these in. And I think that's what it's going to take from it to go from a great dish or an okay dish to like an amazing dish. And that's why we re-season. And I encourage you to do this after you use an instant pot or a slow cooker because the flavors, you can tell it. You see where that nutritional yeast is trying to not mix all the way in. So we want to make sure that we mix it in really, really good. And the bay leaf was a great addition. 
It's always such a great addition to soups and spaghetti sauces. Yeah, Nooch makes everything better. I agree with you on that one. Okay, let me get a little bit here. Um, and um, Joanne's saying it's a good thing I bought a couple of bottles of those vinegar. I know, I'm just using, using them like crazy. Yep, this is exactly the way I want it. So there was some... This morning I used oregano, basil, powdered rosemary, onion powder, bay leaf. I used salt and pepper to cook it with because there was, if I was putting beans, not canned beans, but dried and or soaked beans, you don't want to add tomatoes or salt to those. It slows the cooking and beans are variable already. We don't want to make it any harder for ourselves. Okay, so... Let's make a bowl. So I keep all the seasonings to the side that I use in the morning so I can see what might need to come out of it for later. And those of you who've been watching, you've been seeing my little It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown Chris, uh, Halloween Bowls. Okay. So I'm just going to take some of this. Maybe this is maybe I need a, a better scooper than that. That doesn't seem to be doing well. I think I need the. Here we go. I use these instant pot ladles on everything, and you can eat this by itself. You could put it over toast or something if you wanted to. I'm calling that spaghetti squash. My um, pasta. Right, get a little bit more. I know it's a lot of food, but like I said, we didn't really eat much today. <laughs> Life was too busy. Okay, and you can either sprinkle some nooch on it. I actually have some BioLife Parmesan that I grated. And so I'm just going to put just a little dusting of that on there. Because that's going to make it seem like special date night kind of food instead of it just came out of the slow cooker. And there you have it. That's our dinner for tonight. And it really took very little time in the morning. It took almost no time right now. Um, oh, it would be great in a baked potato. It would be great on toast. It could even, I can even see it go in a sweet potato, but I like savory sweet potato dishes. Um, and Brandy likes my bowl because it is cute. It's awesome. I got it at Home Goods. if you guys are interested. Uh-oh. Louisa says she lost sound, but I don't think that's me. Nope, Fran. Let's see. Fran, yes. Okay, here we go. Can you guys still hear me? Because somebody said they couldn't, but it looks like I am on. So tell me yes or no, and I'll wait a minute. But I am seeing the sound over there. I'm trying to use up the batteries that just have a little bit in them. That's why I went out this morning. But actually, while we're talking, I will go ahead and make the second bowl. Okay, great. Thanks, Ashley. Ashley says she can still hear me. And you can eat it by itself. You can put it on something. It's just really, you know, it's your dinner. What makes you happy? I know it's going to make ha Cheryl happy is to not have the bay leaf in her part. She feels very wronged when that happens. That, that was a little piece that I didn't smush enough. I'm just going to put in there because I'll smush it some more before I put it for our lunch leftovers. So we don't end up not eating like we did today. Okay, great. And again, just a little more of this file life. And when you shred it, it goes a really, really long way. So, however, if you don't want to do that, because it does have some oil and salt in it, don't put it on. You could put in a little bit of nutritional yeast just sprinkled on top. I do that sometimes too. 
and that works great. You could stir in spinach or kale, really anything. You could have either started off and made this like super veggie rific. We could have um, chopped kale, spinach, Swiss chard, collards, really small and put them in at the end like we did with soups the other day. But basically that's it and it's a super easy spaghetti squash dish and it's a reason that it's worth it to peel your spaghetti squash. So if you have any questions, let me know. And I'm not sure if I'll be on tomorrow. I think I have kind of a stocked fridge, but I'll be on before, before you know it. I will bring you another slow cooker meal, okay? And I let me know if you guys are making some of these. And if you do, put, please put pictures up. You know, I would love to see pictures of what you're doing and tag me in them, okay? Kathy Hester. Let me see if there are any questions. Okay, have a wonderful dinner, everybody. Oh, sorry, got a question. Yes, Fran, a sprinkle of parsley or fresh basil would be amazing. And Joanne says peeling is in her future. I know at first it seems super counterintuitive because why would you peel something if you didn't have to? But this is why. Okay. Great. Have a wonderful rest of your night and a delicious, nutritious dinner.